The gap between rich and poor in the Dub refugee camps is quite wide. The societies living in the camps are categorized into three types of social class. The higher class, which is obviously the business people. The middle class, that's those whose close relatives in the abroad send some amount at the end of the month. And the low class, the laborers who work for the former two to earn a living. We asked Hashim, a manual leprae in the Gahale refugee camp to show us what life is really like living in the refugee camps today below the poverty line. He gave us the permission to film him and his family so that they can speak for the thousands or so families who are living in poverty in the refugee camps. And this is the story. and I have been living in these camps for some years. The harsh life in these camps is what motivated me to become voice for the voiceless people and compile this documentary. I visited Hashim's house very early in the morning before they even woke up to catch up with their daily routine. On a typical day, Asiya, Hashim's wife is the first person to wake up. She wakes Hashim and the kids so that they can pray morning prayers. She then lights the fire to prepare the common energizer, that's the tea, and the most cooked and beloved food in the Somali community, that's Anjera Somali pancake. The kids go to the Duxi where they learn the Quran and the other Islamic knowledge. Hashim, the breadwinner of the family, goes to what he's less convinced to call it a chop. That's fetching water for the neighboring families who at the end of the month pay him some amount of money which he believes is not enough. <laughs> Mala <laughs> Hadid Kia Shona, Hadid Tanka Mana, Hawa, San Mala, Il Mala, 
I flowed him up to the water tub to practically contact and observe the fetching of the water. Hashim is also a bricklayer and a china. He builds houses and walls. This is him and his friend bargaining with a customer whose wall collapsed due to heavy rain. <laughs>
Just two days after you are done with Hashim's story, we hear this sad news, indeed very sad. Hashim got very ill and was diagnosed with hypertension, high blood pressure. The right hand, the right leg and the tongue are the major parts of his body affected by the stroke. The doctors said that this is called a right hemispheric stroke and it happens when blood cannot flow to the right half of the brain. Hashim can neither walk now nor even can he stand on his own. The apple hand that used to feed six kids and their mom is weak now. The family is in real catastrophe. Asia is here to explain for us how life changed after this tragic incident. The right leg, right hand and the tongue are the parts seriously damaged by the stroke. The blood pressure is always high. It is not coming down. They said we will admit him instead of returning him. And I told them that I left very small kids at home and the neighboring girl whom I could have begged to cook for them is herself in difficulties because her kid is sick and hospitalized. So I got busy and helpless. He will therefore stay here before the girl comes. My kids are weak. Moreover, they are schooling. Nobody is here to help us. I told them, my kids, try to fetch the water that dad used to fetch so that we can get something to eat. The family needs food. The public school is free, but the tuition and the debts need money for the kids to learn. The breadwinner is in this critical condition and I also can't work because I am busy taking care of him. Hashem, our and official, you know, Shafoy, for the those jobs don't exist for us anymore because nobody is doing it. 
I told these small kids to fetch water for the neighboring families and I know it is very difficult for them. For us adults, we were having difficulties in doing it. How about them? They can't, but before they say we can't, I will let them fetch because we need something to eat. I can neither say stop nor continue. I am in a dilemma. Early in the morning, they have to rush to the Duxi. They will be done with the Duxi lessons by 7 a.m. And by 8 a.m., they have to go to school. Some of them are class 4, so my mind is not cool. I am stressed. Anyone watching me as I am talking, I request them to help us. We are desperate for help. As the interview was ongoing, a neighbor interrupted us by asking us here about Hashmi's health. I talked with the two old boys about their daddy's illness and its impact on them. I also floated the kids to the water tap 
just like I did with Hashim, but this time I had to fetch the water with them because they are young and weak to carry 20 liter jerry cans. are not strong enough to carry a 20 liter jerrycan, leave alone the whole process of fetching, even carrying the jerrycan from the chub to the wheelbarrow is a difficult task. After fetching this water, they have to rush to school. Maybe they could have used this time to work out their homeworks, but it's a must for them to fetch the water because they need something to eat. <laughs> 